Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge here. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a vintage top hat using our finest vintage brushes in Affinity 3. The brushes also work in Affinity Designer 1 and 2. The brushes feature strokes inspired by vintage engravings and crosshatch pen and ink. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly layer up brush strokes to build convincing vintage tone and texture. Why not grab the pack and follow along? I'm working in a document that's 2819 by 1648 pixels. The size of the document is based on the proportions of the background I'm using. I've already loaded our finest vintage brushes into the path brushes panel, and I've set this document up with the image rough as the top layer. You can download this rough image by following the link in the description below. I've also added a vintage paper parchment texture as a background. You don't need it to follow along, but it's available as part of our Vintage Paper Ephemera Archive Bundle. Learn more by following the link in the description below. I'm going to start by drawing the outlines. So I'm picking the path brush tool and selecting one of the outline brushes by clicking a brush icon. I'm selecting the color using a swatch I created earlier. If you're following along, here are the CMYK values. I'm setting the stroke to 12.5 pixels and I'm also adjusting the brush stabilizer settings. And now I'm going to trace the rough to add the outlines. Because the brushes are path brushes, I can alter the strokes after drawing to tweak the outlines. I'm grouping the brush strokes and naming the group. Next is the fun part. I'm going to build up the crosshatch tone by layering different brush strokes. I'll start by filling the main section of the hat with some horizontal brush strokes. I'm selecting the finest vintage horizontal four brush. Setting the brush width to 225 pixels, then drawing three brush strokes. As you can see, the brushes draw multiple lines with one stroke, saving time and effort. Don't worry that it overspills the edge of the hat, we're going to fix that in a bit. I'm grouping the brush strokes, and now I'm going to crop the brush strokes using a clipping mask to remove the unwanted sections. To do this, I'm creating a shape around the section I want to keep visible. And I'm starting with a basic vector rectangle, but you could draw a shape using the pencil or pen tools. To use the shape to crop the brush strokes, simply go to the layers panel, then drag the brush stroke group icon into the shape icon. Be sure to drag into the name part of the icon and not the thumbnail section. Next, I'm going to adapt the brush strokes to work better with each other and also with the perspective of the hat. I'm going to do this using Affinity's width tool. I'm selecting the lower stroke and altering the width so it's narrower at each end and wider in the center. It's important that this brush stroke is centered vertically, roughly where it's cropped for this to look good. I'm adjusting the middle stroke so that it lines up better with the lower one and that the lines in each are roughly parallel. And now I'm using the width tool to adjust the top brush stroke so it lines up better with the middle stroke and also the outline at the top. If you want more information about the width tool, I have a dedicated video for that and you can see it by following the link in the description below. I'm naming the clipping group, and now I'm adding some vertical hatch lines using the same brush as before. And I'm selecting an object inside the clipping group so that the next stroke I draw is placed above it and therefore also cropped. I'm adding another brush stroke to match on the opposite side. And now I'm switching to another brush. This one is standard horizontal one. It's similar to the previous brush stroke, but the hatching lines get gradually smaller, giving the appearance that the hatching fades out. As I switch brushes, I'm holding the Alt key to keep the brush width settings I previously used. I'm on a PC. If you're on a Mac, hold the Option key instead. And I'm using the new brush to add two more sets of hatch lines. 
I've not positioned them perfectly, so I'm tweaking them with the node tool. And I'm going to shift them slightly with the move tool too. Next, I'm swapping to a diagonal hatched brush. And again, I'm holding the Alt key as I swap, so I retain the previous width settings. And I'm drawing this new set of lines slightly further from the center. And as you can see, the shading is building really effectively now. To finish the section, I'm swapping to a brush which has the diagonal hatching flowing in the opposite direction, then drawing lines even further away from the center of the hat. I'm going to use the same process to fill in the hat band, but I'm going to make the hatching less dense. I'm using the same brush, then creating a shape to use as a clipping mask. And cropping the brush stroke. I'm now switching back to the horizontal brush while holding the Alt key to keep the brush width settings. And now I'm switching back to the horizontal one brush to make more horizontal lines. And moving the brush strokes to align with the existing shading on the hat. Now I'm going to add hatching for the brim in two sections. I'm selecting standard horizontal four again, then drawing two brush strokes. I'm adjusting the strokes slightly with the node tool. then using the pencil tool to draw a shape to use as a clipping mask. Then cropping the brush strokes. I'm now going to use the diagonal one and two brushes to build up more tone within the clipping mask. The second brim section is created in the same way, using the horizontal one brush. Then using the pencil tool to draw a shape to use as a clipping mask. then building more tone with diagonal brushes one and two. I'm naming the brim groups and creating a dark shape to fill this area using the pencil tool. I'll do a few final tweaks to a few of the brush strokes. Then the image is done. If you want to try this yourself, pick up our finest vintage affinity brush set from artifactsforge.com by following the link in the description below. And if you have any questions, please let me know by leaving a comment. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel for more affinity tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.